Good morning, everyone. It's Heather Cooper with Playing with Paper Crafting. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canada. And I'm here with you this morning to show you a double Z-fold card. If you're in the States, you would call it a double Z-fold card. But because I'm Canadian, I call it a double Z-fold card. And I'm using the Hello Chick bundle with the stamp set and dies. This is the stamp set. I've got the one that came out a couple of years ago. I kept it because it's so cute. Glad I did. And the dies are new. We didn't have them back when we had that stamp set. But uh, now they've come out with dies to go with it. And then now there's a new uh, hello birthday chick with dies which I didn't get but I'm kind of sorry I didn't because I could have used them because I made a fence for this card and uh, the dies that go with hello birthday chick have a fence in them and I, I could have used it for this card this is kind of thick here there's a lot of things actually I would have changed about this card and I might do that when I rebuild it here for um, this Monday Morning Live video. Anyway, I'm just going to get set up on my tablet here so that I can see your comments and sit down <laughs> while I craft with you this morning. Hope it's nice out for everybody there. It's a bit rainy here, a little bit dull. I'm a little bit dull this morning, but I will survive. Anyway, we will continue here. I'm all ready to go. Okay, so I started with a piece of Just Jade, which is a retiring um, in color and it'll be retiring in a few short weeks and I'm not sure but I think it might I don't know if it's already well it actually can't be sold out until it officially retires and that's in just a couple of days so I think you could still get an order in if you wanted some um, it's one of the prettiest colors out, out of the retiring um, uh, in colors. That's just my opinion, of course. That in Rococo Rose. So, anyway, uh, it, I took a piece of 8.5 by 11 card stock and I cut it the long way down, so 4 and a quarter by 11. And then I scored it at 2 and 3 quarters and 5.5. Five 5.5 and half. Five and half is halfway along and 2 and 3 quarters is half of that. Okay? And uh, now I'm going to uh, fold it into the Z fold configuration. So I'm going to start by folding this one back. And it's really important to make sure that your edges align with the edges of the card. And then give it a really good burnish. Okay, and then this on this one, you're going to fold it forward. And again, make sure that your edges align and then give it a good burnish. And then that gives you the Z fold, as you can see here. Okay. Um, so that's our basic mechanism. And as you can see, the fence also has a Z fold. We just have it aligned opposite. So the Z starts here and goes backwards. But we'll get to the fence a little bit later. Now, I've got a piece of balmy blue, which is in our regular family of colors. Uh, I have it at two and a half by 11, okay, and it's um, 
scored it the same, two and three quarters, but five and a half. So I'm going to fold it the same way. The first one I'm going to fold back, making sure that the edges align, and then give it a good scoring or a good um, burnishing on the score line. And then I'm going to fold it forward again, aligning the edges. Okay. Now, I want to make, I don't, hi, hi Eunice, how are you doing? I want to um, make these hills with the, the background um, just jade. So to do that, um, I need to cut some curves, but the easy way to do that is to have this folded and then I'm just going to cut one long arc in the bottom here. I'm going to do it freehand because I just don't have any dies that would do that. And I'm going to try and do it as smoothly as I can. There we go. Is that smooth? Let me smooth that one out just a little bit. Come on, baby. Is that um, tends to unsmooth where, where that um, it changes from double thickness to single thickness. So let's just move that out of the way and then open it up. Yeah. I think I did better the last time I did it. I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. And I open it up here. I won't have that big crunch. But that uh, folding, it gives it some uniformity and makes it uh, a little easier to do. Okay, now, if you were to just glue it on like this, you would find, oh, it's great that way, but when you fold it, it pulls, even when it's glued, it pulls it away from the edge. So um, when you, if you cut it and then glue it on, it tends to do that less because there's less of a pull on it. But before I do that, I want to add some, at least some birds to add a little bit of interest. So I have the uh, Sailing Home stamp set, which is this one here. It's got those uh, seabirds up there. So I'm going to use my Memento ink and add a couple of seabirds on there. I hope I get a good... Just want to make sure I don't have an edge on there. Okay. And... Stamp that up there. And we'll try the same over here. There we go. When it's closed, it looks like that. I'm not going to try and add the clouds today because they weren't very successful. Last time I did it, I used um, gel pen. If I have time at the end, I'll, I'll see about trying that. Um, if you want me to, I will. But I'd rather quit while I'm ahead. Okay, and there's it's a long enough video anyway, so I'm going to just cut up the side. I could use my trimmer to do that too. Right up the middle here. And then just even that off on this vision, field of vision here, Heather. Okay, 
So we'll just add some uh, seal plus on this. Oh, actually seal, not seal plus. Add enough to keep it in place, especially around the edges. I want to make sure that I get it right on the edge there. It's not as critical on the um, fold. Okay. And now we're going to just burnish that again. And uh, we can trim off any excess on the back here. You can find um, any measurements that you're missing on my blog post uh, today. And I will be posting a replay of this on there as well, of the video. Okay, and now we'll post, uh, we'll, not post, we'll paste, <laughs> we'll adhere, we'll glue the other half on. The longer part here. And again, we'll make sure that the edge matches up. And it looks like it needs a bit of a trim right there. Okay, there's our sky. Not liking how that has curved up there, but I can trim that out later. Okay, now our next step is to build our fence, although we're not going to attach it right away. So um, I've cut a piece of crumb cake. Now I've made it one inch by 11 inches and I've scored it at the same um, places at two and three quarters and five. But I found that that is a little bit wide and it kind of obscures some of the um, characters and some of the scenery that's going on there. So I'm going to cut it back to three quarters of an inch and hopefully that gives a little bit more um, viewing, things to see. And now um, I'm going to fold it at the five inches, five and a half, sorry, inches. And then I want to run it through my stem and cut and emboss machine using Yeah, it does. Yeah, it just takes the pressure off, Eunice. So I'm going to run it through with the pine wood planks to give it that um, wood grain. Before I do that, I want to spritz it with some water. So just a little bit here. And that helps give uh, a deeper embossing. So I'm just going to place it in between a couple of the um, planks there, or the edges of the planks. Okay, and then I'm going to bring over my cut and boss machine. So I've got the regular platform, and I've got, this is one of the old um, 
embossing, 3D embossing folders. So all I need is a regular cutting plate above it. That's all it needs. That's the sandwich you need to go through. And we'll run that through. Fold it again. Is that a bloody? Oh, there's my other fold line. So that goes forward or back rather, and then this folds the other way. Just so I don't obliterate those folds. And um, this is the way it's going to go in my card. Actually, I like, I think I'm going to change those folds because I like the um, embossing to go out. So I'm just going to change that around a little bit. Okay, so that's how it'll, that's how it'll look. And then you can see that um, Texture a little bit better. Okay, now what I want to do is that how it, Yeah, that's how it goes. So now I want what I want to do is to locate Make and locate the fence posts So what I what I actually did was um, When I did the original was I took a wider piece I think it was two, no, one and a quarter, one and a half inches. I did one and a half inches, and then I cut off a half inch once I'd embossed it um, to make the fence posts. So these are half inch wide, and I'm going to use my uh, take your pick, no, banner, Pick, and, pick a punch. Now I've got it. Banner pick a punch. And I want to, what I want to do is to, I got it in there. Yeah. I just want to make the fence posts. So I need five of them. But I'm just, what I'm going to do is just uh, put either end in. Just make sure that it's at the end. These fit right in at the smallest width, which is half an inch. This would give me six of them, but I only need five. So the last one I'll just punch at one end. Okay. And then I will bring in my trimmer again. And these need to be trimmed at, I think it's two and a half inches. I better check. My memory's poor. And, yep, yeah, two and a half inches. Not as poor as I thought. Here's our first one. We'll put that point at two and a half inches. I don't know if you can see that here. And then trim it. Then we'll turn the other end. Put that at two and a half inches. And trim that off. And we'll do the same on this one. Two and a half inches. And the last one. 
two and a half inches. Okay. Put that back. Now. Okay, so the first one we're going to, and we're going to need our glue dots for this. to put my glue dot right in the middle and then one fairly close to it maybe above it anyway I just don't want it to twist on itself so I'm going to put that one I just want to look at my sample here we go. So that one was about, um, yeah, about that much in. I'll put it a little, a little lower down. Oh, maybe a little higher. Okay. Now, the next one was just past the edge so if I match that up it'll go here so I'm going to add two more dots in the middle pretty close together oh thanks Eunice necessity is the mother of invention eh if I didn't order the other one. Okay, so right about right about there. And that make sure that I'm getting it at the right height. Now if you're making it for the first time, you just want to make sure if you um, put it along a line here, let's say at one inch. And then you just want to make sure that so this means I need to move it down just a wee bit so that they're at about the same height. Okay. Now the thing is we want the leg over here to match right up with this one. As much as possible. In fact, this one should probably come over just a little bit. Move it over a wee bit. Sorry, I should be doing this up here. I get so carried away. Okay, so what I'm saying is that if we um, adjust our fence along a line, then we can make sure that our fence posts are located at the same height. And then the fence post uh, behind has to line up with this fence post so that when you close the card, they're in the same place. So I'm just trying to line that up a little bit and then when I open this up I can see where it needs to be so about an eighth of an inch from the edge there okay such mathematical cal calculations just putting a couple on there. Okay, so have to be uh, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And let's see if that matches up now. Oh, pretty close. I'll move it over a little bit. Just 
despite our careful measurements. We're still fighting with it here. Okay, so that's pretty close. Then we're going to put one here, right on the edge actually. So line that up along that dotted line and locate it right about there. This one is really not cooperating here. I'd have to add another glue dot to that one. Okay, and now we want this one to be in exactly the same place. So that's right at the end of this. And I'm adding two glue dots again this to make sure that it doesn't pivot. Okay, so right on the end, like that. And this one I'm just going to add some more glue dots on because I've moved it so much it's lost its uh, stick here. That way I can get it on there in the right spot. Okay, let's close it up again. Those two are good. Right on that dotted line. I'll stick it right on there. Okay. Okay, there's our fence. And we're going to save that for a little bit. The only other thing that we have to worry about is that we want to make um, an intermediary line on our fence like this. I don't know if you can see it like this so that we can have a more 3D effect in there. And so this has to be two and three quarter inches because it's halfway across there from halfway across the five and a five and a half so it's two and three quarter inches then we need a half inch on either end to fold so that we can um, attach it to the fence and the cards the side of the card so we need to score this at let me just get rid of my glue dots here for a minute we will be needing them extensively for the next little while so I just want to bring in my cutting tool, paper cutter, paper trimmer, and I'm going to use the scoring blade and I want to score uh, each end at a half inch. Now I can get rid of my paper trimmer there. And uh, the first one is going to be scored forward, and this one is going to be scored backwards. And I'm going to add whatever I need to add on there before I add it to my fence. Okay, now we're going to build our background a little bit. Need a little drink here. So um, you don't need to worry, I've made a lot of stuff ahead of time because really it's about how to construct a double Z fold card rather than how to do all the little bits and pieces in between. So 
I think you already know how to do all those things. Okay, so I uh, die cut the chicken coop out of Daffodil Delight uh, that's been um, added, or I've had uh, an adhesive sheet, ugh, I can't talk today, adhesive sheet added to it. So all I need to do is just to peel the backing off of that and add it to the card. Right about there. Okay, and the other thing that we're going to add, this will add, actually be added to the fence, but I'm going to stamp the sentiment on that one, which is have a happy day. And I'm going to use my memento ink again, which was the only ink that I used to stamp all the images. Okay, and I'm going to Stamp that right on my sign. Have a happy day. Perfect. Put that away. Clean this up. Anybody else have questions? Love to answer questions. Okay, so we're going to actually add that right to the fence. We'll use a glue dot for that. And then it'll be right in front of the chicken coop. So I'm going to put a glue dot on top of the signpost there and add it to the middle of the fence there. So when it's glued on, it'll stick right about there, okay? So that's that part. Um, then on the uh, middle part, we've got two of uh, the porn stalks. And these, again, this is um, Garden Green, and they were the Garden Green was mounted on an adhesive sheet as well, and then these were die cut. And that makes them just like a sticker to mount on your card. Much easier than trying to apply glue. These adhesive sheets are really easy to work with and really easy to die cut over top of. Okay. So I'm mounting them at uh, different heights just for variety. And then the other three I'm putting on the next side of the card. And I'm overlapping them a little bit. They are really uh, realistic looking ones. And then they look even better once you get the corn stalks or the corn cobs on them. But I can't sing the praises of the adhesive sheets enough. Because you know how hard it is to apply adhesive to these a very narrow kinds of images that you die cut. And these just make it so much better. We'll come down a bit for this one. Okay, now I have About 10. I've got a few extra corn cobs for the 
for the chickens. But what I've done is the husks are cut out of garden green and the cobs are cut out of Daffodil Delight. Both have been mounted on the um, adhesive sheets so that they stick together. And I'll just show you how I go about putting them together. So I take the backing off the husk. That was my cat who wants in on the action. She's just going to have to wait. And it's probably easier to show you this way. And I stick it on there just so that the edge isn't going to show. And I don't take off the backing on the corn cob yet. Trouble getting this one off. Usually my nails are good enough for that. Here it comes. And add this to there. Okay, so now we're going to attach these by removing the backing on the cobs. Yeah, they've got lots of fur to keep them warm though. All right, so there. I'm just looking to see where I put them on here. And on the opposite side. I heard the uh, wind howling last night, so I knew there was a change in the weather a little bit. And then the next ones, this one we're going up a little higher. So up about there. And up near the top. Now everything's rattling because there's a helicopter overhead. You can probably hear that, Eunice. All the china in my china cabinet is rattling. <clears throat> okay, and then over to this side. We'll go down. So basically I've got two cobs per stock where this one's being there we go I think I saved three for the for the um, for the chickens. Just didn't want it to be too symmetrical. <clears throat> okay, I think we're finally finished with our corn cobs. There we go. <clears throat> so there's our cornfield. 
Now we're going to add some chickens and some grain. So let's go with the chickens. Now these I already colored using my Stampin' Blends. So we've got these three guys here. Now this is the chicken that's pecking away at the grain. I'm going to move that one up a little bit. Well, I did actually, I did cut this. Let's just put this fence in place so we can see where the best place is to locate that chicken. So if we put her down there, we'll see her. So I guess that's probably best to just keep her where I had her. So I'm just going to add her with some glue dots. And I gave her two cobs of corn and about four grains of It's funny sometimes that backing comes off so easily. Sometimes it doesn't want to come off at all. Now, um, I cut that, I die cut the grains, they, they come in one die, and I just left them in the die, and um, I'm going to do maybe five. So I'm using my take your pick tool, and I'm going to put them flat down here, and I'm just going to gently Try to take the backing off right in the die without removing the grain. You've seen me do this before. Oh, that one came out. Here we go again, eh, Eunice? I guess we're going with four bits of grain. This worked so perfectly last night. Okay, and so now we're going to just tip this over and stick those grains of dye where we want them. Where'd that one go? Yeah, it went, worked just perfectly last night. Slick as anything. Isn't it always though? Good dress rehearsal, poor performance. That's what they always say. There we go, and the last two. And we'll put one up here and one down here. There we go. It mostly worked. Because I need them for another part. Now this crazy guy, we're going to put so he's peeking over the fence. So I need my fence again, just to make sure I've got him in the right place. We need the legs right at the edge here. So I think right about there. So his head is just over the curve of the hill there. Hi, Kim. Yeah, because those little things are impossible to keep in one place, so. One on his tail there. Okay, so we'll 
have him just peeking over the fence right there. Okay, now we are just about ready to put on the fence, but we're going to get this cross piece ready. Okay, so on the cross piece we have, oh, I forgot about the egg. Yeah, this little egg guy is going to go right about there. So put a couple of, I love this little egg. I made him a brown egg this time. Because most of my daughter's chickens lay brown eggs. There we go. Now, I've got a stump. Come on. So the stump is going to go right on here. And then I've got this chicken. Right about across the middle there. You know what? I'm just gonna run some adhesive across her. to go the other direction like that okay and that's where the rest of the green pieces are going to go on top of the stump so just gently come on baby come to mama there we go gently 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 remove Gently remove, gently remove, okay, <laughs> yeah, touched it in the wrong place. One more. Okay, so we've got all the pieces of grain up there for that chicken. And we're going to get this in the right place. So we're just stand it up here like this. And we want to put a glue dot on this surface. First, and we want it to match the top of the fence there, and then we'll put one on this surface ready to attach to the side of the card and hope that I can keep it from attaching places where I don't want it. In the meantime, okay. Now, we want to attach, we want to add adhesive just before this first fence post. to go. Every time I go over a bump, I lose it. Okay. And then, um, on the back end, keep 
that out of the way. I want it right to the score line here, right to the score line. Using my grain, stay put grain. Okay, tricky, tricky. So let's start with this. And I'm just making sure that the legs of the <coughs> of the fence are touching the. Um, The ground or the edge of the card. So we can get this part done. That's why it was so important to get the the legs in the right place. And then that in place. Okay. Now we can open it up. Like so. And then just get that adhere to the wall there and then close it up and everything's where it should be <clears throat> give everything another good burnish okay and I think that does it Oh yeah, that take your pick tool is a lifesaver. Okay, and then there's that little, I think that's too close to the wall. I don't know if I can move it. Next time I would move it a little bit, make it closer to the corn stalks, because you don't really see it unless you really turn around there. Anyway, you can see the other chickens a little bit better now. That the fence is a little bit thinner. And that is the Z Fold card. Ladies and gentlemen, if there are any watching. All right. So I think that's all for today. And I'm going to be working on my newsletter this week. So by the end of the month, the newsletter will be coming out. Um, this week, by the mid middle of the week, we will get our retiring list from the annual catalog. So we'll find out what will be um, be discontinued from the which sets will be discontinued from the annual catalog um, before the new one comes out in May. So I will be letting you know about that. And I will also <coughs> be getting a, uh, a, a look at the new annual catalog this Wednesday. And um, you could be doing that too if you wanted to join my team. So if you want to join my team before Wednesday, well, if you want to join my team anytime before May, you could get... Uh, a, you could get a look at the new annual catalog before the public does and also be able to order from it ahead of time. So, yeah, I know it's coming out a month early this, this year. So, yeah, you could uh, join my team and it's a really good deal. Um, any way you look at it, you get $165 worth of any Stampin' Up! product that you choose um, for only $135 without any shipping costs. All right, you can uh, message me if you're interested. Uh, thanks everybody and we'll say goodbye for now. <laughs>